Today, I'm gonna build seven different LEGO vehicles to test on all different terrains, like sand, mud, rocks, and even ice. Starting with the simplest of these vehicles, which just needs to drive on a flat surface. So we just need a basic easy car that just steers and accelerates. So let's start by building the steering mechanism. And for that, we're gonna need a servo motor because if you just attach a simple gear to this, it'll only turn 180 degrees. So we can actually turn this little thing, which has a gear rack on it, and make a pretty simple steering mechanism. Now we have the front of the car that can actually steer. For acceleration, we can just use one motor, which will look into a battery box, and spin like that. So we just need to put an axle through and attach this to two wheels. Now, this won't give it a lot of torque, but it will give it a lot of speed. And with this motor, we should be fine. Then we just gotta connect these two with Technic to make a simple frame so all this fits together. One last thing we gotta add to this car is the ability to control it. All we gotta do is just split the channels. We're gonna put the acceleration on the red channel, the steering on the blue channel. Plug this guy into the battery box. Now it's waiting for instructions from the remote. Now let's test it out. So here's our flat surface car. As you can see, it goes forward and backwards. Yeah. So it definitely works on flat surfaces, as you can see. And since I added the gear ratio to the back, it's actually very powerful. So the car works. Flat surfaces, we can check that one off the list. The next terrain we gotta build a vehicle for is sand. And I have built at least five vehicles for this, and none of them have worked. Let's see. Let's replace the wheels on this. Forward. Hey. <laughs> Turn. I think this is a simple fix. What is happening? But I've actually learned a lot. We need to build a vehicle that's lightweight, high power, high torque, basically is nothing that I've built before. For the wheels, I'm literally just gonna steal them off my Lunar Rover. And these wheels, since they're modeled after the ones that they use on the moon, I assume these should work pretty well for sand. Then to power this thing, I'm gonna make it drive sort of like a tank, so when I turn these backwards and these forwards, hopefully the car will turn. So if we have one motor for each side, like these, we'll use these large motors here, and then we'll use a worm drive, which has a gear ratio built in that's very hefty. Put a couple axles in here. You can see it spins this top gear, but it spins it pretty slow. We we'll need the wheels to actually be like this, so we'll have to use a 90 degree actuator to get that. And this connects on here. Now we rotate this, it rotates that, which means if we connect it to this, it should rotate the wheel. We need to build out this arm to be stronger and then attach the other one on this side. Make some big brain moves, hopefully. All right, here's the design I came up with for one side. We got our motor hooked into our gearbox, which is hooked into our couplings, which, as you can see, spins both of these different directions, which is not what we want. So we'll have to move one of these gears over. We'll put the battery box between this, and then I think if we just get one more, this thing should technically sort of maybe work, maybe. If it doesn't work as a car, we can use it as an alien spectrograph. Now that we've got two of these built, we just have to snap them together. And yeah, that thing should be good to go. And now we can test this in the sand and see if it works. Please work. No way. Dude, it's going. Can it turn? And it can turn, and it's slow, but sure, it goes across the sand. Dude, that's dope. These lunar tires, I thought this wouldn't work. No way. Dude, what? It's actually going. It made it over. <laughs> that is definitely a success. Wow. Now, we're gonna move on to the next terrain, rocks. Before I build that though, make sure you check out this video sponsor, Crazy Kai's Brickling Store. They have got a bunch of pieces in stock in tons of different colors. So if you wanna build some cool inventions like I'm doing and you need more bricks, check out their store, first link down in the description. So for the rock vehicle suspension, I'm thinking we can build it so it actually has a rotating part in the middle of the car so that the back half and the front half can move independently. That way we won't have to do anything funky with the steering mechanism. Let me build up a quick example. So check us out. As this goes over something, the front can move and the back can move. As long as all four wheels are touching the ground, that'll give us traction. So now we just need to scale this up to something bigger. So let's start by building the front portion of the car with steering and then attach them together. We don't have a whole lot of room to work with on this, so I'm trying to lock in other pieces with other pieces. As you see, we got the steering motor on the bottom. We need to lock this in, otherwise these gears will lift up and this thing can just slide freely. So if we snap on our motor for the drive shaft like that, and hook on our couplings, it's really all about like trying one thing and then if that doesn't work, you try the next thing. But if the next thing works, then it'll throw off the first thing and you have to start all over again. It's called inventing. It's actually quite therapeutic. <laughs> we just need to do a little bit of finagling with these gears to get them in the right position. Now I have the front of the vehicle done. This took forever to get this gear ratio in here, but just look how cool this looks. There's two hours of engineering. <laughs> That's actually really, really cool to watch. Now we just gotta build the back portion, which should be really easy. We just need to connect a motor to an axle. Now, snap these together.
Let's make this frame a little bit stronger and then we'll just put the design on to make it look like an actual car. And then to cover up this ugly Technic, I'm just gonna attach some of these little Technic pins that have the studs on the side and then some plates like this. That way we can get a nice body going and it'll look like a truck. Here we have the finished Lego rock crawler. Hopefully, I've yet to test it on rocks, but we can turn it on and drive it. The thing about rock crawling is not break the, the thing. I'm gonna steer through and hopefully make it. And now you can see why we need all wheel drive. Turn. Not again. Oh, I, I see the issue now. One more variation, and then I give up. <laughs> Pretty sure I fixed the issue, so here we go. I've gotta learn how to drive. Wow, there we go. There we go, there we go. Come on now. Come on now, there we go. There we go, it's going. <laughs> it has the power now. It can do it. I know it can. Oh yes. Yes. We've done it. It is does have its flaws, but it's Lego. But we made it from A to B. That's with no springs or anything, and it makes it over these rocks. Next up, we have an even more difficult task, the mud. And this one is going to be very difficult. So Christian had the idea to use excavation scoops, build some sort of vehicle that'll navigate through the mud. And so I'm thinking we put four on the front and four on the back, and we make kind of like a scoop motorcycle. <laughs> We need them both to spin, and so to motorize them, we're gonna use one of these like this, and then we're gonna attach a motor to this. And now we have that, that'll spin that. All we have to do now is just build a duplicate of this, connect them both together. Here it is, let's test it out and see if it ruins this battery. All right, here we go. Oh, come on! Can you explain to you? Whose idea was this again? <laughs> I never said it was gonna work. So this one's a no. We're gonna have to come up with another mud vehicle. I did a quick redesign. This version is less cursed. <laughs> we have two paddles, same as last time. They're both on worm gears, except I moved them up to the top. That way they won't get mud all over them. Let's see if this works. We can do it. We're thinking if we just put it on the outside of this thing, which is like half of a concrete spinner, use this as kind of like a boat, and then two impellers would pull it across. All right, here we go. And we already have issues. Okay, mark three. We put these cool scoop propellers on there. See, now it's going under the, the stuff, so this is good. <laughs> Uh-oh. Random idea. What if we, instead of trying to go through the mud, on top of the mud, if we made like a wheel, it's kind of like a, a pinwheel, but without the blades, that might kind of help us because it's thin and they basically want to touch the bottom. I'm down to try it. <laughs> I think I'll just throw those on this design and then just put a little stick in the back. All right, here we go. So we got the sled back in the back here and then, dang, wow, it actually works. And it can turn and it can go forward. You can turn it, it can go forward, turn, Go forward. This is like a, whoa, it goes backwards really well. A little too well, oh gosh. Don't look at that, well, uh, this one worked. We made it to the end of the mud. The next train we're gonna build a vehicle for is water. Just like Noah, we're gonna build a boat. Except this one is gonna be motorized and hopefully have a working propeller on the back. So, we have a couple boats we can choose from. Going from smallest to largest, we have this little minifigure pontoon boat. Won't really work for motors. We've got this little French boat, which might work, but it's just a little too small, so. Then we've got these two boats. Now they're Lego boats, they actually do float. But we need to fit electronics in them. So I think I'm gonna go with this one. There's just a little bit more room. I'm gonna take the smallest motor I can find and then we kind of stick this guy here off the back. I think we just need a little gear ratio. And then propeller, we're gonna make this the drive gear. So the motor will be hooked up to that. And this one will be hooked up to the propeller. Will this spin? It will spin and that'll probably propel the vehicle. So this is probably the easiest one. Hopefully it'll actually float. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> Dang it! Okay, we're gonna try the other boat. It fits this battery box and this motor right on the back like that. Balanced. Two boats. Mark two. Hey, we have a boat and it hasn't sunk yet. Check it out. Now it can't steer, but it can float and run. And see, all you gotta do, put this on the side and it'll spin in circles. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> I've been on a boat before. Now, how many minifigures can we stack in the boat before it sinks? 
11. 11. <laughs> now for the next terrain, we've got ice. And for that, I think the best thing to build is a tank. And the nice thing about a tank is that you only need two motors, one for each side of treads. To turn, you basically just spin one motor backwards and one motor forwards. So let's start by building up the treads. So we grab this guy and we put a couple of these on. And then we wrap our tread around, wrap that on. Now we have a tank tread. We just gotta make it stay. What? So I'm gonna build up one side of this to hold the tank tread, like replicate to the other side. And they'll basically just slap them on two motors and a battery box in between. Today I woke up and I just thought to myself, hey, you know what'd be fun? Reinventing the wheel. And then I realized it wouldn't actually be fun. I think I did it this time. Check it out. It actually rolls. As you can see, if this thing's like rolling, it can go over my hand like this. So now we got two sides. The plan is to put them together. But first, we gotta come up with a gear ratio because this motor is way too fast. Ideally, it'd be cool to make it go fast, but we wanna go for torque because torque equals power. So if we grab this piece and we put a Lego worm gear inside of it, then we connect this part to the motor. That's perfect, and that is so much torque because all that motor power is being converted into torque. So this is gonna work really well. Now we just gotta combine these. I'm gonna add a bunch of these pins. We can actually put on pieces to extend these. Here we go. Over ice. Hey, it's working. It's going. Ice vehicle all the way, dude. <laughs> Check it out, we can turn 360 degrees. It can drive from one side to the other. Turn that way. I like the way tanks move a lot. And it can turn, which is great. I'd say that works really well, actually. The next train we're gonna build a vehicle for is snow. So for the snow vehicle, I wanna build a snowmobile. I've actually built a snowmobile on this channel. It was like my second video ever, and it was terrible. <laughs> Don't watch that video. But for this one, we have these treads, and I think these will work on snow. And then for the front, we need to build two simple skis. And I think I'm gonna put these slopes upside down like this. The goal is to put most of the weight on the front half so that the steering actually works. So I'm gonna build up a couple skis real quick with some Technic attachments. And I think these will hook into a steering mechanism just like tires. This is a patented steering design, you guys. Literally the easiest, simplest thing to make ever. <laughs> then we'll just attach our skis up at the top here. Now that we've got the steering mechanism built, we just need to build up the thing that's gonna make it drive with these treads. We can put both these little wheels onto a lift arm, and then we just need to motorize one of them. Check it out. It's like a worm. You can play with it. It goes up your arms. It's like a lizard. <laughs> then we just gotta work out some sort of frame here in these lift arms that will connect both. And we finally got it finished, so let's test it and see if it works on the snow. It goes forward, it goes backwards, it steers. I, I don't know if it'll work, but we'll see. We have our snow. It's working way better than the first one I built. Let's take it outside. Dude, this, this is dope. You see the little tread marks it's leaving too. That's kind of cool. It's not super fast, but it's going. I'm actually super impressed. The motor hasn't conked out yet because usually that's how these types of things go. Dude, this is awesome. We built all these Lego vehicles for different terrains. Huge thanks for watching. Check out one of these two videos YouTube recommends specifically for you, and I'll see you in the next one. See ya.